Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to another timeless pick a card reading. In today's reading, I'm going to draw from the jar. We're going to draw a past life from the jar. There are five past lives in here. And when I go into each group, I will draw one past life and we'll see how it corresponds to the cards. So what are the different past lives that we have here in the jar? Well, there are five of them. I'll put them up on the screen and I'll just read through quickly now. We've got a female from ancient Egypt. We have a male soldier from Roman times. We have a nobleman from the Inca Empire. We have a queen from the Mongolian Empire. And we have a warrior from ancient Maori times. So those are the different past lives in the jar and I will draw one for each group. So pick either group one, group two or group three and I will see you in your reading. Group one, if you chose group number one then you are in the right place. Let's take a look at the cards that have come through for you. Please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. These are general readings and there might be you know, a message in here for you, the whole thing might resonate, it depends. So take on board what resonates, discard what doesn't. Uh, the first card we've got here, it says buy the book and that's number 11. Okay. Then for tarot, you have got the nine of cups in reverse. You've got the Nine of Swords in reverse. You've got the Ace of Swords upright. Let's get that to focus. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm using this Kipper Oracle deck, which is New. I've had it for ages, I just haven't used it yet. Uh, number nine, change. Okay, and I've got two cards from the astrology deck that I use. The first one is Gemini. Oh, is that going to focus? There we go. Isn't that beautiful? The twins. <laughs> okay, and we've also got another one. We've got Sagittarius. Okay, so what do we have here? Now this is fascinating and I'm going to talk about these briefly just on their own and then what we'll do is we'll draw a past life and we'll see who comes through. This is a fascinating spread. We've got four number nines here. <laughs> so that's the first thing that I notice. Nine, nine, number nine, Sagittarius, nine. All right, so there's a lot of number nines here. When you just look at the number nine on its own, number nine is very much that you're coming to completion on something. In fact, I, I think you've, you've finished something and you're just about to click into a new beginning. Look at that, we've got a new beginning here. We've got the ace, we've got a number one. We've got the ace, we've got a number one, and then we've got this by the book number two. You can see that there, 11 adds up to two. So I think, and well, we've got Gemini three, we've got one, two, three. Isn't that interesting? So just looking at the numbers, we've got a fascinating story here. I think you're on the brink of a massive change. And I think this is gonna be an incredibly good change for you. I think an old cycle that hasn't been working out is due to complete. There's something that you've been going through that hasn't been making you happy, okay? Something that's been stressing you out, something 
when these are upright, well, when this is upright, it means you're going through something that's not great. When this is in its reverse position, it's done. Okay, this thing is not going to bother you anymore. When this is upright, this is kind of, I like to say of it, that it's independent happiness or that you're enjoying everything. It's also a wish fulfillment card. It's everything's going great, you know, but look, she's on her own. And this is a thing of being independently happy. Isn't that interesting? And we've got Gemini here, which is very much about, you know, being with someone, right? Or being with other people or being social. Okay, and I think the thing that you're going through, there's been a dynamic or a pattern that has come to an, an end, or it is, and that's interesting, we had a giant truck go down the street. I don't know if it came on the recorder. Hmm. Yeah, because ah, we've had, <clears throat> we've had the rubbish removal people come just recently. <coughs> Apologies for the coughing. And I think there's some old dynamic, some old pattern, some old thing that hasn't been making you happy. That's as that truck was just going down the road. That was a rubbish truck. I just looked out the window. Something is going from your life. Something is ended. Something has come to completion. You don't need to experience that anymore. I also think this is kind of saying that you don't need to do everything on your own all the time anymore either. I think that you're probably brilliant actually at being on your own and doing your own thing. This could be in work, this could be in love, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, but there's something about that it's now time for you to change, right? We've got this change card, it's now time for you to change. And it's now time for you to enjoy being with other people as well. That's important. You do need other people. You do need to ask for help. Um, that is important. And socialize, you know, all that kind of thing. Now, the new thing that's opening up for you, so you're closing something out, you're closing out an old dynamic, an old pattern, the rubbish truck just went down the street, we're chucking it out, okay? <laughs> There's some old dynamic, old pattern that you're not gonna be dealing with anymore. Might have kept you isolated. Uh, it could be something like that. The new phase that's opening up is, is it's gonna be, really great I think and I think it is to do with you becoming a lot sharper a lot sharper about who you are what it is that you want and there's going to be some elements we've got a one we've got a one here a two here and a three here so there's going to be some element of you doing something in a traditional way or going by the book Again, look, there's social. These are all connected. There's three of them together. It's almost like it could be like um, two minds are better than one. So you're in some kind of situation where, you know, it's, it's better to, to join up with someone else or to think about things with someone else or team up or there's some team element here. We've got the Sagittarius card. This is a number nine card. And this is a, I mean, this does relate in with this card. I think you've been trying to pursue the truth of something. I think you've been thinking deeply about something. You've been going into something quite, um, quite deeply. But it feels like you don't have to. And you don't have to do all of this on your own. Um, that's really, these are really the key messages that are coming out. The new, the new thing that's opening up, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be, yeah, two minds are better than one. I think it's gonna be a sharpening up of your thoughts. I think where you're headed next and the new things that are opening up for you next 
it's going to require other people. It's going to require teamwork. It's going to require something about being traditional. Isn't that interesting? And you're going to use your mind. Okay, it's going to be more of a mind thing. Very, very interesting. Let's see what past life comes up for you and see if there's any further clarity with that. Gosh, I thought I was going to draw the past life person a lot sooner and it's nine minutes. This has gone so quickly. <clears throat> Let's see what you've got. Oh, wow. You got the Mongolian Empire one. You got the queen. So in a past life, you were a queen. You were managing thousands in your city, strategically moving camps based on seasons. And that's really interesting because we've got this nine of cups here. And look, it's depicted by a female who's on her own. And so there's something about, there's something going on in this life that's resonating with this life here where you were in a past life a queen, you were managing thousands in your city and you're probably doing all this on your own. I mean, God, imagine how stressful that would be. So there's something that you're doing and look, strategy, isn't that interesting? We've got this ace of, this is the gift. This is a gift that you have from past lives. This is your natural gift. It's, you're incredibly sharp. You're incredibly able to manage and figure out the strategy, work out what to do next. And look at all the moving parts. This queen has had to move thousands of people in her city from one region to another. So I think they did that so that the grass would be luscious and the, you know, they didn't want to overuse one portion of land kind of thing. So that's why they would have to move based on the seasons. You've got a natural gift for being able to strategize, for being able to make really big and complex things happen. And queen, we've got this element of tradition here. So we've got this, we've got by the book. You can imagine a queen is not, uh, you know, <laughs> she's not innovating or um doing anything too radical or wild or creative or no that's not what's being called for what's actually being called for right now is that you bring some of this queen energy into the situation that you're in right now and I feel like this transition that you're going through this old dynamic that is dying out that you're not going to have to encounter anymore okay because that's the nine of swords this is good in the reverse we like it in the reverse that's going to die out that's going away Yes, you're going through change and it very much involves other people, but I feel like you're going to be fine because you've got this ace card up your sleeve. I think whatever situation that you're in right now, be strategic and, and make your moves with the, with the confidence and grace and style of a queen or a king, of course, if you're a man watching this. That's beautiful. I was hoping this one would come out. I was really hoping the queen would make an appearance. That's so cool, guys. This is your gift. This is you. You're, you're very capable of figuring anything out. I was just watching a video before about this guy who was saying that entrepreneurs are the ones who figure everything out. They never say it can't be done. They just say, well, what's the problem? I'll do some research, I'll find out, I'll figure it out, I'll, I'll see if someone else has done it, I'll, you know, I'll work this thing out. And one of the things he was saying in this video, and this is probably a message for you, is that, yeah, you don't need to do it all on your own. Look at this queen here. The queen, yes, yeah, she's at the top, she might feel alone, but really things are happening because she's being strategic and she's getting other people to do stuff. And I think that's probably what's going on here. This Gemini card here, this, uh, and it feels like you don't need to reinvent the wheel or do any of that. You can go by the book, whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, it's been done before. And, you know, let's say it's something financial. Let's say it's something work related. It's been done, whatever it is, right? You can figure this out. So 
This has been such an interesting reading group number one. I want to thank you so much for being here. I hope this has contained some good messages for you that you need right now. Please let me know in the comments below. I'm just amazed and blown away by some of your comments because sometimes some of these are really accurate for you guys and I love hearing when that's the case. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group number two. If you chose group number two then you are in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards and see what has come through. Now, as with any of my readings please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Okay so we've got this co-create card here, number 40. We've got an owl and a leopard. I think that's a leopard. Is that an, that's an egg? Is that an egg? I think so. It looks like there's a face in it. This deck is so amazing. There are all these hidden faces everywhere. I really love it. Okay, now what have you got for tarot? We've got the eight of wands in reverse. We've got the knight of cups in reverse. We've got the Ten of Swords upright. Ouch. <laughs> and normally this is this is a really interesting depiction. It's been cut in half. Usually they depict it with um, the swords in someone's back. It's a bit full on. Let's have a look here. We've got community. Give us some space. Okay, let's see what else comes through. We've got Aries. Got a little Mars symbol there. And we also have the wounded healer, Chiron. This is very much used in tropical Western astrology heard a lot about Chiron over the years as I've tuned into various astrology reports. Okay what do we have here? This is a really interesting spread. See if you could imagine these upright this would be so we've got messages coming in thick and fast right and we've got the Knight of Cups. Now when he's upright this is very much an offer of love or the, the pursuit, you know, maybe this could be you pursuing something as well. Now in the reverse position, these energies are cooled down or, um, you know, maybe they're a bit on pause. So I'm going to read this in terms of there's something that you've been pursuing that you uh, don't, don't quite feel like uh, pursuing right now, fair enough, that's probably because you're going through this. Okay, this is not a great card to get, I will say that. But when you manifest this, it means that, it very much means that this dynamic will be done, this will be finished with, you won't have to keep encountering this. Number 10 is also, it's, it's kind of just a number one. You can see it that yes, okay, there's going to be this pain, but there's an immediate new beginning. Okay, there's a number one here. So I think you've been chipping away at some kind of old pattern. And you're coming to a brand new phase. It's, this is a little bit like group one as well. But whereas with group one, I wasn't particularly talking about love. This could be about love. This could be about heartbreak. That you are chipping away at old heartbreak in such a way that like it's not going to recur in your life again. I think you're getting 
to some, to quite an incredible level of mastery really with the one seven axis in astrology. So what is that? That is, so we've got Aries here. Okay, so we've got Aries. Now why am I getting a seven? <laughs> This is unusual. All right, I came to the seven because when you look at these numbers, we've got a four here. That says co-create. This says community. Co-creating is all about working with, now it could be working with the divine, it could be working with other people. And this is a community card of other people. The three and the nine add to a 12, which adds to a three. The three and the four add to a seven. <laughs> okay, so that's how I've come to the one seven axis in astrology and I think you're coming to a place where you're really really refining what it means to be you when you're around other people can you be your true self when you are with other people and I think that's what you're refining at this time There's massive refinement there. These are ongoing lessons that we keep perfecting over time, over the whole life, over the course of a life. Do we ever, you know, get perfect in any of these things? No, we don't. And that's why we keep coming back because there's always more to learn, there's always more to do. So I think that there's, you're kind of scaling that one seven axis where you're really, really figuring out how to be your true self when there's other people around and when there are other people around who hold very different ideas to you and they might be intimidated by you or they might not be happy with you or they might be kind of um, making it difficult for you to be your true self we've got the wounded healer the ten of swords there's, there's there is some healing needed and i think you've just taken the foot off the accelerator of life a little bit whatever it is that you want to pursue want to do I think you've just taken the foot off the accelerator perhaps something has happened perhaps you're having to shed another layer or um, you know with the whole heartbreak thing if you're healing from from that or if some old thing has recurred or come back let's take a look and see what past life message might be or what past life might be impacting this because I do believe that most of us have you know we've been here a lot and look whether this past life is one that you've actually lived or not it doesn't matter <laughs> what matters is that you know because I think I really think we've done just about everything I, I think most anybody on the spiritual path if you're on the spiritual path you're, you're here because you have done just about every type of life, I do think. You know, the people who don't make it to the spiritual path and who are just material and who just think, uh, well, who think spirituality is stupid or not real or whatever, like those people, I think they're kind of newer souls. I think anybody who's watching this video, you would have been whatever this life is gonna be, you know? Let's take a look. <laughs> whatever any of these lives are gonna be, right? Let's take a look. Oh, Roman times, fantastic. Let's have a look here, 15th century. I believe that stands for the Common Era. You were once a male soldier. You would work 12 to 18 hours per day every day for one year straight. Far out, that is a lot of work. Yeah, and look at this. You were a male soldier, of course you were. Look at the depiction here. This guy's been cut in half. Wow. So really, I'm going to interpret this card in the context of this as being about that you are working incredibly hard at something, but I don't think it's perhaps your heart's desire or the thing that you really want to be doing, which I think you've had to put a little bit of a pause on. I think you're working incredibly hard and I, and that, I think this just refers to this. So maybe you haven't gone through some kind of Ten of Swords thing recently. Maybe this is just purely depicting this, this guy here. Okay, so that's interesting. Now this, is, this very much still stands in that I think the soul work that you are doing, look at that, because I mean, 
this isn't right to work this hard. <laughs> And it could be, if we're dealing with that 1-7 axis, because that, this could be, are you self-employed? Are you working too hard at your own business? It could be that. Um, it could be something to do with that. You might be working extremely hard at your own self-business, self-made business. It could, it could definitely be that. So I think there is a message from the past lives that to cherish the time that you have, any time out that you get, because look, you're probably not working this hard, okay? And back in the old days, people did have to work this hard. In our modern lives, we are so incredibly lucky. You know, we get two days off in the week. Like, how amazing is that? And I think you're being asked to cherish that and to keep at this process of working out. Because I think the wound could be around how do you maintain yourself, your composure, when you're with certain other individuals who don't want you to, okay? You're just being you, you're being kind, you're being happy. These are the people, they see that, they see that they can't do that. And, you know, they might be trying to destabilize you. You're getting to levels of mastery where you can be your full self no matter who you're around, no matter where you are. I think you're definitely coming to, to mastery around that. That is the 1-7 axis. That is figuring out. There's a guy called Jerry Wise. And if you are struggling with any of that, how to be your true self around other people, Jerry Wise, J-E-R-R-Y space Wise, W-I-S-E. He's a brilliant coach on YouTube. He's got a lot of great materials that are all free. All these videos that really help with this thing called de-selfing. So when you're around other people, you might do this natural thing. And this can sometimes be trained through childhood that you de-self. You don't be your true self, you do what you have to do to fit in. And Jerry Wise explains that uh, we don't have to do that. We can be ourselves in a kind way and, and be kind to these people and that they'll be okay with it. And you know, it's all that kind of thing. It's fascinating, fascinating stuff. Uh, I've had to study quite a bit of that myself. So <laughs> guys, this has been an absolute pleasure to do this reading for you. I hope this has been interesting for you. Look at that, a male soldier in past lives. You were working so hard. So I'm really hoping that you're able, and maybe look at that, a male soldier. I mean, this is it, right? And and it's kind of like, I, I think this could, this could be a message of, so if you have taken the foot off the accelerator of something you're trying to create or do or whatever, that's good. I think you might need some time out. I think this is a message to just say, relax, chill out, um, enjoy the time that you're in, which is now, <laughs> uh, even though it's hard to, believe me, I know that the world is in a mess right now, but, um, but there must be some space that you can carve out for yourself where you can just really unwind and enjoy that you're able to do that. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below how this goes. I love reading your comments and sometimes for some of you, these are just really spot on. And if that's you, please let me know below because that helps me so much and it encourages me to keep going as well. So thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Oh, this is interesting. You've got this fortune cookie here. It says not for you. There's a number six. And let's have a look at that closely. What is written there? It's coming out of the fortune cookie and it says nope with a couple of exclamation points. Hang on, let me check how many exclamation points. Two exclamation points. Gosh, so that is really being emphasized there. <laughs> get that to focus. We've also got a chessboard here. We've got quite a few things going on. So straight off the bat, that is an amazing card with 
with a message, not for you. So if you have any yes, no questions in that you are asking for some specific guidance, there's a message already. Now we've got the Seven of Wands in reverse. We've got the Two of Wands in reverse. We've got the tower upright. It's a beautiful depiction. And we have got, aha, uh -huh, message number seven. Okay. We've got the second house. You can see Venus there, symbol for Venus. Symbol for Taurus. I have. It's the house of resources, material possessions and values. I also think it's family as well. If you read B.V. Raman, he explains that it is family as well. Here is where we see our belongings, wealth and finances, as well as the pillars on which material, intellectual and, in and emotional security is developed. There we go. Okay, and then the next card we have is 120 degrees. It's a trine. Isn't that interesting? So, I think that's referring to 120 degrees. Which I guess would be two planets kind of like in trine to each other. I do believe. It says here, fluency, ease, talent, development, privilege, aptitude, self-comfort, temper, laziness, intelligence. Okay. So there's a few things going on here. What, what do I see? What am I going to interpret? Well, what I'm seeing is that I think you're going through a time of incredible change. Look at that, the tower. You're having a tower moment. So something massive is changing in your world right now. There could be a little bit of resistance to this. When this is upright, the two of wands, this is you're planning, you, you want change. You know, you're looking out into the horizon, you're like, yeah, I want something new. I can't keep doing this forever. When it's in its reverse, you're like, well, I don't think I really want to change right now. So see how that feels for you. Maybe you do want change, but then there's some part of you, could be a subconscious part of you that doesn't want change, okay? A hidden part, a blind spot, somewhere that's not communicating with you. There's something in there that's going, I don't want change, quite possibly. Seven of Wands, this is a card where you are defending, perhaps you're at the top or you've come some way and you're having to defend. You've got people now who are beneath you, who are attacking you. Maybe they don't like your success or that kind of thing. When this is in the reverse, this can signify that maybe you're tired of having to do that. Uh, it, it could just be as simple as that. That there's a tiredness that you're just like, do I have to keep defending myself? We've got this card, not for you, with a number six here. Um, it's really interesting. Some numerology specialists, they, I've heard them class number six as a stop. Um, in tarot, it's typically a, a number of love. I actually do like the number six a lot. But here it is indicating a stop, isn't it? It's saying this is not for you. So there's something that I feel that you've been trying to manifest or trying to make happen. You might have been working hard at it. But you've reached a place where, and I think that you've been, I think you've been working hard at it, but there's some, something that's saying stop for now. And I think a massive change is going to take place. And I think this massive change that's coming in, I really think it's going to make life easier. Okay, and that's great. You're going to get a message from your higher self 
which I think has been trying to communicate with you. And I think it's been trying to say that it's, it's not quite a slow down message as such. I think there was a bit of a slow down message in group two, which I just did. I actually think this is a message of kind of go easy. It's like whatever you're, you're trying to make manifest or make happen, you don't have to sweat so hard or work so hard or really like make it <laughs> mold it. Like you're being asked to allow, we've got Venus here. You're being asked to allow, allow this to come in and that it's going to be easy. Trines in astrology are easy. When I was studying Western astrology and you have these trines in a chart, trines, if a chart is full of trines, Sometimes it can make a person lazy, actually, because the energy is just so smooth and it's just so flying and people just, oh, I don't have to do anything. But you're in the situation that you're in, you're actually being asked to, to kind of go with the flow, be easy, allow, 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 magnetize. Don't sweat it. Don't like there's some, there's some t tight, hard, forceful energy here or something. There's something that's you're really trying to make it happen, but it's like, whoa, no. Go easy, allow it to come in. Okay, this adds to three. Three in numerology is very much receptivity. It's about allowing it to come in. It's about that you are not the instigator or you're not the one making it happen. You're working with the universe kind of thing. Let's take a look and see which past life wants to come. Through. <laughs> this will just add some extra texture here. We're going to see who comes through and perhaps they have a message or something will crystallize as we take a look and see what random thing comes through here. Oh, wow. Cool. I like this for you. Inca Empire, 15th century AD, South America. Look at that. You're a nobleman. You're in an important job in the government. You own land and you don't pay taxes. Hello. Look at that. <laughs> That's exactly this. This is the easy money kind of thing. This is the don't sweat it. Look at this guy. He's a nobleman. He's got it good because I researched a few people in this Inca empire and I tell you, some people had it really tough and like they had to work really hard and they got nowhere and had no money and all this kind of thing. Whereas this guy, look at that. He's got an important job in the government. He owns land. He doesn't pay taxes. So, and this is certainly not saying that you shouldn't pay your taxes or whatever, but what this is saying is that there doesn't need to be such hard work um, to, to make something happen if you if it's if it's so much effort and it's so hard maybe it's not the right thing maybe you need to stop okay so you shouldn't have to beat it into place or work really hard or no that, that's not the message here this is about ease this is about and look for the quality of ease is it happening easily is it are you enjoying it? Make sure you have that some quality of ease. It, it doesn't mean that you don't work hard at all. No, that's not it. You do have to, everyone has to put effort in every day. I do believe that. And that's very much a Saturnian thing. And I tend to look at this card from Saturn's point of view. This is my Saturn deck. And he is saying that there's some change here, but he's not saying don't do anything at all. Um, you know, whereas this card is kind of saying, well, this card is just saying not for you. So there's something that's not for you. Maybe it's the, maybe it's that ultra hard work is not for you, that you shouldn't have to be sweating it or it shouldn't be such a grind or it shouldn't be such an uphill battle. Uphill battle, absolutely. Look at that, seven of wands. Yeah, it, it shouldn't. And that's probably why this is in the reverse. This is saying it shouldn't be such an uphill battle. And the way through, and this is going to be made so easy when you allow 
got Venus there. Allow yourself to be guided by your own intuition. Okay? Messages will come through. I promise you, you will be told. You will be told what to do next. You will get ideas. You will get. The other day when I made that Peter Allen uh, Masters episode, I mean, truly, the, his music just was coming in my head and I just started looking him up and, I, I, you know, you'll be guided, you'll be shown, okay, do this. And I had all this old footage and I didn't know, I, I never thought I was going to use that. My mom told me, oh, you should put that in a video one day. And I was like, no, I'm never going to do that. And then, But then I got guided, I got a message, I got an idea, I got all these ideas come into my head and I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Like that, you just got to wait for the messages to come in. So whatever it is that you're, you're dealing with here, I, I don't, I, and it feels like you don't have to do too much. It feels like just, just tune in, just check in, tune in, tune into the intuition. See, see what comes onto your YouTube dashboard, what random thing. Click on it, go on a little adventure, you know, just see what's coming to you naturally and go with that and do more of that. And at first that process can be, a bit scary it can be a bit oh you know I don't do life that way try it out experiment try see if you can just go on your intuition I did this with a friend one time we were in the English countryside and he was driving and I said oh, why don't we do this random thing where like I'll just tell you to turn left turn right you know like no map and we turn off our phones and no map and let's just see what where we go and let's see what happens it was so incredible. So I would just randomly say, okay, turn left. We're going down all these roads and okay, and this is all boring. And then turn right. Anyway, we eventually got to this most incredible place. I couldn't believe it. I saw this sign that said glass blowing. And I was like, ooh, ooh, turn in here. And um, we turn in and we meet this lady who ended up becoming a friend of mine. And she... Oh, it was just so amazing. She met the Dalai Lama. She did all these glass blowings for all these companies. And she was like really wealthy. And anyway, she was like, oh, which vase do you want? And I bought one and she gave me a little free gift as well and um, became my friend on Facebook. Anyway, the point of the story is that like that would never have happened if we didn't just kind of, yeah, like abandon something and just just go okay we're just going to go purely on guidance you know which we're, ju we're just going to purely be guided and it was so fantastic like amazing things happen so maybe experiment with it maybe do that if you have a friend and you got a car and you just drive somewhere where you've never been before or something and, and see what happens or give yourself a game like that give yourself something where you're just going to go off guidance and see what happens it's incredible. It's so much fun. I'm glad that little story popped into my mind because that's, that's one of my best memories ever. That was really fun that day. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for drawing these cards through me. And, uh, and I wish you well. And let me know in the comments below how you get on and if this resonated and, you know, what aspects of it were good. I always love to hear from you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.